confidence interval for the population proportion. Uh, that's an idea quite interesting and quite hard to get. Uh, what's the confidence interval? Let's say the value of the sample proportion p hat can be used to estimate the population p. Okay, we normally don't know what is p. And we can only know p hat. For example, I don't know how many what's the proportion of 70 years old teenagers like for females and males well I don't know that that's why I want to do like sample thing and then find out the proportion so what I'm trying to do now is using the p hat to estimate the population p okay I'll use it to, to estimate that so since the uh, this is a single value estimate okay this is uh, this is a single value estimate we it is called a point estimate of p so what is a point estimate of p i just select one sample normally you no know, scientists are not going to only select one sample they will select more and compare them and then find the average or whatever but not going to take one well in mass method we sim simplify the case and we we'll only take one time of the sample and that is called a point of estimation okay we just do this experiment once i select 400 students and i can't count how many females how many males and i find the proportion that is the proportion we think is relatively true already okay that's one point estimation It's the point estimation of p uh, an interval estimate for population p is called the confidence confidence interval for p so what is that mm, i find the p hat like a lowercase p hat that's the sample proportion you know that's not going to be exactly what is the p okay you know you're not that good to have directly the true p out so i will use that p hat to give a range let's say for example my p is 0.3 then i may use a formula i'll give you the formula later use the formula to find out the range for example 0.3 so it's 0.1 to 0.4 okay i will say that's my confidence interval 0.1 to 0.4 is my confidence interval so what is the confidence interval have a look here uh, I have different confidence interval it depends on how much I'm confident about I would say 0.1 to 0.4 is 95% confidence okay I'm 95% sure almost like quite sure that the true mean will lies in between that well there is a possibility it's lie outside that okay I'll tell you the formula later but we understand this first I First, work out the p hat, lowercase p hat, and I use the formula to find two endpoints. And I say, well, my true mean must be lies in between that. I'm hundred. Uh, you can't have hundred percent sure. I'm ninety five percent sure of that. Okay, I'm ninety five percent sure of that. Um, you can have even wide wider range, and I'll say that's I'm ninety eight percent sure the mean will be here. Well, there is two percent of the chance that is outside. It's possible, but it's very unlikely. Or I can say a lower I can say a 90% of the confidence interval it can become narrow okay it's not containing that much values and then make it narrow so it like this confidence interval oh my god where's my charger <laughs> go, go, go. okay okay safe uh, well like I can have different intervals and that interval is about 90% 95% 98% like 99% even or 99.9 .9, depends on you but you won't have 100% true if it's 100% just negative infinity to positive infinity I'm 100% sure it must be there okay there's always a chance that the actual mean will lie outside that okay so how do you calculate that let's just go through this terrible formula in a terrible Friday afternoon and I hope you can get some of that uh, if the sample size is large, okay, then the p hat is normally distribution with that. You know that, right? We just figure out that it's a normal, approximate normal distribution. And approximately 95% confidence interval can be calculated as, well, 95% is within two standard deviations. Do remember that. It's about negative 2 to 2, but it's approximate 95. It's not exact 95. The exact 95 is negative 1.96 to 1.96. You don't need to know that. You can use your calculator to work out that. But like in part 1 exam, you still treat negative 2 and 2 as 95%. But actually 1.96 to 1.96 is the actual 95. Well, it's quite close to 2. You can see that. Um, okay, you want Z. Like, let's say Z is 
in between those two values will be 95%. And what we have to do here is x minus mu over standard deviation. That's standardized. And standardized the value. That becomes a z. That's a z now. Why is a z? I use the p. It's the x. Minus lowercase p. That's the true mean. Over the standard deviation. That is the standard deviation. Go above that is the standard deviation. That is the standardized. And that becomes a z. Okay, I'll say z in between those two values. Give me 95%. And the next thing I will do is times the standard deviation on each side. Okay, times the standard deviation on each side. You don't need to know this. You don't need to remember that. I'm just going through this. Make it more clear to you. Okay, to that. Okay. And then I have... My lowercase p will be subtract the p hat on each side. Okay, add or add p hat. Well, you rearrange it. You rearrange it. And you have lowercase p is in between that. Okay, so what this equation actually telling you? My actual p in between those two numbers, the probability is 95%. Okay, my true p in between those two range, that will be 95%. But you don't need to know why. That's just all by the formula it comes out. You don't need to remember this proof. But you need to remember the formula. Okay, you need to remember the formula. So I will say I will, when I can calculate the two nth values, okay, the two nth values, I will say in between that interval, I'm 95 confident is my p will be in that range. So what is my, well, you don't, I don't want to make things complex, okay? What you all need to remember is this equation here. Okay, it's all this equation here. What is that? P hat, okay, let's go through one by one. P hat is your point estimation. Well, I know I'm not explaining things clear above because I don't want to confuse you too much and go through all these complex calculations with you. You don't need that. Okay, that's just a proof that why is true. Well, maybe I don't... Well, if not including that, it's bad, like, where it comes from. I still need to show you where it comes from. But you don't really need to clearly go in every single step. It's basically the idea that Z in between negative 1.96 to 1.96 would be 95%. And I'm standardized the P hat... Um, standardize the p hat distribution and then rearrange everything make p in the middle and they have two values on the left and right and say that's 95 percent that's the whole point of it so the p hat lowercase p hat okay can you see that's the uppercase p hat above and then at below we change it to a lowercase p hat because that's the point of estimation i'm not going to do a lot of estimation and then find the p hat value i'll just use one time of the estimation give that p hat. That's called the point estimation. So those two p hat is the point estimation values. Okay, what's that? That's the standard deviation of p hat. Okay, can you see the difference? Do you remember the standard deviation of p hat is actually p1 minus p over n. Do you remember that? It's not p hat. Okay, it's not p hat. But we don't have p now. Well, if I know P, why I'm talking about confidence interval? I'm 100% sure my P is that. Well, there's no point to talking about confidence interval anymore. So, well, I need to find my P to find standard deviation. Therefore, I'll use P hat direct, directly instead of P to say that's a point estimation of my P and I'll use that to treat it like my standard deviation. That's why there's still errors, okay? It's not accurate. There's still errors. There's still possibilities that the P is lying outside. So, but that's the way we should do it. Okay, it's exactly the same as before, but instead of P, you have P hat. Okay, instead of P, you have P hat. That's the point of estimation, point estimation. So, we have it here. And the last thing is this 1.96. What's the 1.96? And positive, like you plus 1 and you minus 1. Can you see that looks identical? Okay, that looks identical. It's just P hat, subtract that, and P hat, add that. Uh, add that. So what's that 1.96? So it's the probability negative 1.96 to um, Z 1.96 gives you 95%. That's the 95 confidence interval and that's the value you need to find on Z. What can give you a 95 confidence interval? That's the two values on the Z normal. 
Okay, if it does not make sense, then let's have a look at the bottom one, it's the 99% confidence interval. Therefore, we use 2.58 instead of 1.96. What's 2.58? 2.58 is like within two, negative 2.58. That to 2.58, that's a 99%. Again, you don't need to remember that. What you need to do is just you know what is 99%, you have 99% here, 1% outside, that's 0.5%. So on the left of that number is an inverse norm, normal of 0.995,0,1. That's the inverse normal and that will equal to 2.58. That will give you 2.58. Okay? So that's how you find the 2.5. You're not going to remember all of that. Well, if you can, that's good. If you can't, just use calculator to work that out. And that's 99%. Oh, you can find 90%. You can find 10% even. Like, you can find as many as you want. So that's the C% percent confidence interval thing. Okay, C% percent confidence interval thing. Well, can you see the formula exactly the same. The only thing changed is the 1.96, 2.58, and this K. Okay, what is the K then? The K must be the probability, well, it's here. The probability in between negative K to positive K give you C percent. Okay, if that gives you C percent, what you put into the calculator is, well, in between that to that, that is C percent. Well, what you have on this side, or, or this side, is the same. Okay, it's 100% minus C% percent divided by 2. Right, like you have C% percent in the middle, then you use 100% 1 to minus that, and then divide by 2 is on each side. Why we need that? Because I want to know the area, so that's the K. That's the negative K. I want to find all the area on the left hand side of K. So you will use one subtract that. Okay, you use one subtract that. Um, that is okay. That's this. So that's the area on the left. So you use inverse normal to find that area. And then just do whatever, find that K values out. Okay, inverse of that range, comma one, comma zero, comma one. And then find that range, that K. And that K, you sub that in, will give you the C percent confidence interval. Okay, will give you the C percent of confidence interval. Well, it looks really complex, okay? I know it looks really complex, but it's really easy. I'll just do one example with you. I have six minutes. I'll just complete example 10 with you. In a class of 20, 17% of the students are planning on going overseas during the term break. Okay, what is 20? Can you tell me what's the 20? N, okay, N equals to 20. It's a sample of 20. What's the 17%? P or P hat? If you said that's N, it must be P hat. If it's a sample, you are talking about the sample of 20, it's not the whole population. It must be P hat is 17%. Lower case P hat, okay, lower case P hat is 17%. You need to distinguish between P and P hat, okay? P hat is the sample proportion. P is the actual, we are not talking about the actual thing. You are not talking about actual proportion of students' population will travel overseas. You're just talking about my class, okay, this particular class of 20. Okay, so you want to find the 99% of confidence interval. Okay, 99% of the confidence interval. So the 99%, so P probability of K, negative K to Z, to K of 99 equals to 99% and K will give you 2.58. Okay, we just worked that out above. That's the 2.58. Okay, 99% is, well, I can show you. That's menu 553. 
of 0 0.995 because on the left is 0 0.995 is 2.5758 we treat as 2.58 that's how you work that out okay and okay what we need is p hat p hat you have it 0.7 and what you need next is p hat 1 minus p hat over n n is 20 in this case okay over n that equals to 0 0.17 times 0 0.83 over 20 okay over 20 so that equals to square root 0 0.17 times plus times 0 0.83 over 20 that's 0 0.84 okay 0 0.084 so the confidence interval must be p hat is 0 0.17 subtract 2.58 times 0 0.084 comma 0 0.17 plus 2.58 times 0 0.084 okay it's exactly a formula okay it's exactly the formula okay p hat subtract k times that thing p hat plus k times that thing it's just a formula when you find p hat when you find n everything is given and you just need to find k what's the confidence interval 99 percent easy okay 2.58 put into the calculator work that out okay put in the calculator work that out so what you need is yeah, where's my calculator here? 0 0.17 subtract 2.58 times times what? Times the thing above. Okay, you have that thing. Okay, which which is negative, which is not good. But let's say the positive 0 0.17 plus 2.58. times that that's 0 0.3 well you will put it back to 0 your proportion will not going to be like negative it will be 0 you need to adjust that in a re reasonable range so it will be a 0 so negative you're not going to have negative you have 0 to 0 0.38 3867 So your 99 confidence interval will be in that range, okay, in that range. You won't have negative confidence interval, you won't have negative proportion, it must be a positive one. Therefore, you will have a positive, okay, you will have a positive. Okay, um, well, I will save that first, come up.